was driving home from the pharmacy the other day and I got to a stoplight and on every corner there was an East Indian girl or guy holding a sign that said, no farmers, no food. Oh yeah, right. Like people are going to stop eating. No, I think that really isn't the truth. More likely the truth is that they have a grandfather in India who's about to face a very difficult time because he owns a small farm and he has owned it probably for generations. And what's going to happen? The same thing is going to happen to the farmers in India that is happening to the farmers in Canada. And if you don't know it's happening, <laughs> I guess it just hasn't happened to you yet, but it's going to. And how do I know? Well, you heard their expression, history repeats itself. Sometimes it rhymes, sometimes it repeats. Well, let me give you the example. At the turn of the 20th century, 1900, farmers were pretty much on their own. And you know, they had land. They grew what they could to feed themselves, and if they had some excess and they could sell it to somebody and make a few bucks, well, everything was gravy. That was pretty good. And along came World War I. And income tax. Mm, yes, income taxes. So, fair enough, everybody had to pay their share to fight this war. And then by the 1917, Europe was in such chaos that it needed food. And Canada was quietly plowing the fields and growing its wheat. And needed something to do with the wheat. Well, we didn't know anybody in Europe anymore, so we sent a few people over to as emissaries and they traded. And we fed Europe. That's okay. It was a good thing to do. And 1920 came and they reinforced the act for a little while, but it wasn't really needed. You know, the farmers of the day thought that grain traders were benevolent human beings kind, with only their farmer's best interest at heart at all times. What a load of crap. So by 1935, and five years into the worldwide depression which lasted ten, the Canadian farmer was up to his eyeballs in debt and, well, a lot of them had gone bankrupt, moved to the city, orphaned their kids, and standard bread lines. They rode the rails. They did everything they could possibly physically do to try and make ends meet. And it was lousy. Those people who didn't go bankrupt but were getting there by 1935 got the message through to the federal government of Canada. And they said like this, we're about to go bankrupt. If you don't want us to farm anymore, we understand. But if you do, please help us negotiate with the world because nobody wants to pay us a fair price and we got a lot of grain sitting around. So the Canadian government said sure and took money from people in cities and in areas of agricultural earned income and built the Canadian Wheat Board and said you will sell all your wheat and all your barley through us and we'll get you a better shake because unions work. <laughs> the unions, tish, tish. Yeah, unions do work. And that's what it was like. So you did have less power to negotiate. That's what was going on. Fewer people to negotiate with. It worked so well that by 1943, the government of the day said, you know something? We're going to make it the law that every farmer has to sell to the Canadian Wheat Board. And the Wheat Board will sell at one desk to the entire world. Mm -hmm. And it worked too. Really, really, really well as a matter of fact. Otherwise it would have died within like five years, right? So, here's a bunch of farmers who are finally relieved of the stress of dealing with the kinds of people that deal with grain, who are not benevolent human beings, who don't want to pay them what they're worth. And they're dealing with a government. Yeah, that government gets them an average shake. Some years they make more than they should. And some years they don't get what they could if they were selling it privately. But that makes up for when the years are not good. So, it's an averaging system as well. Yeah. Greed, it always gets us. And this is where right-wing politicians come in. You see, 
Right-wing politicians unabashedly will tell you that greed is good. Yeah, they will, if you ask them. They will also tell you that anything that tends to get in the way of free enterprise is good. Well, if that was true, then 1935, those farmers, we should have just told them to take a hike and bought them all out and, eh, you know, screwed them over. But we didn't do that, because we're smarter than that, or at least we used to be. Yeah. Sadly, now, the people who voted against the wheat board are the farmers. Because one guy wanted to go and sell his to someone in the USA who was ordered to pay too much so that they could screw up the wheat board. And that's exactly what happened. And after that, along comes the savior, Mr. Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada, member of the Conservative Party. What a dick. Yeah, he sold it to Saudi Arabia, who then sold it to somebody else. But the farmers of Canada are SOL now. In the worst sense. And the next time that there's a depression, or the next time there's a serious drought, and farmers are standing there cap in hand saying, I'm getting taken to the cleaners. Please help me set up a wheat board. We're all probably going to look at them and say, hmm, I don't know. I'm not sure you're smart enough to know what you're asking for. You weren't last time. You voted conservative. You voted to destroy your own system. Just like people are doing right now in India. Well, that's the story. That's why it's relevant right now, what's going on in India. Because it's happened to us already. And it's going to happen again. My name's Patrick Stewart. I'm not conservative. And you know something? You shouldn't be either.